One company that has had a very rough 2024 has been Intel, with its stock price falling by over 50%. But they're poised to go into 2025 with a new look as their CEO, Pat Gelsinger, retiring as of December 1st. So today, we are going to talk about some changes that have occurred on Intel's leadership team, their earnings, as well as what the company needs to focus on moving forward to potentially turn things around. And as always, I appreciate the support you've been showing to the channel if you do enjoy this type of content, drop a like down below and subscribe for more videos like this one. As I mentioned, year to date, Intel stock price is down over 55%, and it's now sitting only a couple dollars off of its 52 week lows of $18.51. If we look at the last five years, we can see that the stock price peaked in 2021 of around $70 per share. However, from that point till now, the stock has fallen by almost 70%. And during this time in 2021, this man took over as CEO, Pat Gelsinger. He had a vision of Intel becoming one of the top manufacturers of semiconductors in the world. And so began a huge pivot in Intel's business, as he looked to compete with the two largest chip manufacturers at the time, Samsung and Taiwan Semiconductor. He was mainly pursuing a build out of chip manufacturing within the US. And he looked to put pressure on US lawmakers saying that this chip build out was vital to US national security. And this went so far as to leading lawmakers to pass the US Chips and Science Act. And just in the last couple of weeks, this act has granted Intel around $7.9 billion. However, this grant comes a little bit too late for former Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger, as he announced his retirement effective December 1st. But rumors out of the company indicate that this was not a voluntary retirement after a contentious board meeting over Gelsinger's perceived failure to respond to Nvidia's competitive edge and a lack of confidence in Gelsinger's turnaround plans. This is one of those situations where the former CEO's vision may not necessarily have been wrong, but the board has become impatient and wants to see results a lot quicker, and they are tired of where Pat was leading the company towards, so they are deciding to make a change, and they are hoping that that is going to reinvigorate the stock price, because if they don't make a change and Intel continues continues to fall, it could become a target for acquisition or activist investors to step in and try and turn around the company. And a lot of boards really do not like that type of situation. They want to remain in control and drive the company forward. If these other parties start coming in, it really starts convoluting the plan and how it needs to proceed forward. And that could lead into a number of other issues. So with that, the board has announced that CFO David Zinsner, as well as Intel product CEO MJ Holthos will be co-CEOs for the interim. In the last week, Intel has also appointed two new directors at the company. And this is very important information because they appointed these directors after the CEO, Pat Gelsinger, stepped down. However, the search for these directors happened before the CEO stepped down. And this is important information because the board actually approved these two new directors. And one of them is former ASML CEO, Eric Maurice. And ASML based basically holds a monopoly on the equipment used to produce semiconductors. So this could be a clear statement from the board that they are looking to continue the vision of the former CEO and get more and more into the manufacturing of semiconductors. One man certainly doesn't make a company. However, Maurice spent eight years at ASML and during his time, the stock price went up by five fold. And clearly Intel is looking for a similar turnaround in their business. However, the only way they are going to do that that is by turning around their numbers. And in their most recent earnings report, which was released on October 31st, they reported negative 46 cents of EPS compared to analyst expectations of minus three cents. They also reported revenue of $13.28 billion, which beat analyst expectations by a little over 2%. On a gap basis, their earnings were actually far worse. They put up a loss of $3.88 per share. However, the majority of those losses came from restructuring structuring and impairment charges that totaled $18.5 billion. But really, overall, Intel's business continues to decline. They put up $13.3 billion of revenue this quarter. That is down around 6% year over year from $14.2 billion. They also saw their gross margins decline significantly from 45.8% down to 18%. And operating income for this quarter was negative $2.4 billion, down 
down from around $2 billion in 2023. But the thing that is really killing Intel's numbers is their foundry business. This is their manufacturing business for semiconductors. They put up only $4.4 billion of revenue. They came through with an operating loss of $5.8 billion, and their operating margin was negative 134.3%. However, the foundry business could also be something that helps support Intel's business and helps it move into the future. Like for instance, they were awarded $3 billion of direct funding under the Chips and Science Act. This shows clear support from the US government for what Intel is specifically trying to do with their foundry business. On top of that, Intel continues to build out partnerships with large players in the cloud and AI space. One of those being Amazon Web Services. They finalized a multi-year, multi-billion dollar deal that will expand the company's partnership, including custom Exxon 6 chips from Amazon Web Services on Intel 3, as well as new AI fabric chips for Amazon Web Services on Intel 18A. But even with that, there's no denying that Intel has big problems. Their trailing 12-month revenue at the end of 2021 was sitting at $79 billion. However, currently their trailing 12-month revenue is sitting at $54.2 billion. So there has certainly been a huge decline in their business over the last three years. Ever since Intel shifted their focus to this foundry business, they have struggled to stay profitable. At the end of 2021, their trailing 12-month EPS was sitting at $4.86. Just a couple of quarters later, the business fell into unprofitability. And they've seen this trend consistently over the last few years of bouncing between either unprofitable or slightly profitable quarters. But in 2025, analysts expect this to change. There are 39 analysts covering the stock on Yahoo Finance, and they have an average non-GAAP EPS number of 98 cents, a low of 64 cents, and a high of $1.58. These would all be improvements, obviously, from the negative 15 cents expected in 2024. However, the average would still be down from two years ago in 2023, where they put up a dollar and five cents. But I think a lot of these 2025 numbers are going to depend on who the new CEO is and what their vision is for the company. If they shift their focus and completely eliminate the foundry business, that could actually result in some lower numbers in 2025, but potentially higher numbers in 2026. If they start going all in on foundry, that could also drop numbers in 2025 as they could invest even more heavily into that industry. But at least right now in Q4 of 2024, they provided some outlook. They're expecting revenue to come in anywhere between 13.3 and $14.3 billion. They also are expecting EPS of 12 cents per share. Intel reminds me a little bit of GE right now because GE maybe five to 10 years ago was a massive business and they ended up selling off portions of their business and actually focusing a lot more on the core of what they were ultimately good at. And what that ended up doing is it helped the business and helped investors feel more confident in what they were doing. I think Intel right now may be trying to do too much and it wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing to go back to their roots and focus on what they're good at. And I think ultimately that could be a good thing in the future, but it's going to come down to their new CEO and what that person wants to do. Right now, Intel has a forward P ratio of 23.53. I think that's a little bit rich actually because of the uncertainties around the business. The other option, of course, is that Intel continues with their foundry business, and this could end up being a massive thing for Intel, but that really, to me, comes down to how much government support do they get. If they get a ton of government support and the government basically steps in and says, we're not going to let Intel fail, we want them to build out this foundry business so we have a lot more control over chips, that could ultimately help prop up Intel's business and put them in a great position moving forward. Right now, I'm sitting on the sidelines. I am not buying into Intel. I think there's a little bit more certainty that needs to be had around their vision moving forward, especially with a new CEO coming in. But I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section. Who do you think Intel's new CEO should be? Is this stock a buy? Is it a sell? Where do you think the company should head in the future? Let me know all of that down in the comment section. And while you're down there, drop a like and subscribe for more videos like this one. However, as I always say, do not buy a company just because I talked about it here on YouTube. Make sure you are doing your own research and looking into companies that meet your risk tolerance as well as your time horizon. With all that said, have a wonderful rest of your day.
And for the joke of the day, what do elves learn in kindergarten? Check the comments down below for the answer. Thanks for watching.